Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's me, Jerome. This is just Jerome around. This is just a wee vlog just to talk to you guys and just get a lot of stuff off my chest. I really want to do live, but I can't do live right now until the 24 hour thing is up and then I can do live. Um, but my tattoo is healed. Look at that, guys. This is the Memento Mori, the Punisher Skull. It is faded, it needs to get touched up. It was infected. Uh, because of me and my stupidity, I guess. I'd done something fucking stupid, which I probably don't know what I'd done, but it's not my first tattoo, so obviously I'd done something wrong. It was nothing to do with the, uh, the artist. So thank you for doing this beautiful tattoo, and I will have to book in a wee appointment for you to touch it up, and then we can do the Doctor Doom tattoo that we promised here on this part of the arm. But yeah, so... Punisher punished me for getting the skull on my arm. I wasn't allowed. I guess he was not happy for me getting the memento, memento mori on my arm. But I got it anyway, so haha, -ha, Frank Castle, I've got it now. So you can't get it. It's mine. <laughs> so yeah, I just wanted to do a little catch-up vlog and just talk about some things. It's coming up for Christmas. I never really said much about it, um, but I'm not really doing anything for Christmas. It's going to be a lonely one, to be honest. Um, can't be with the family. My sister's in Ireland. We can't fly because of COVID. Uh, my other sister's down in England, down in Kent. Can't see her because it's three families per household, which means that they cannot go beyond that. Well, they can, but is it worth the risk? That's the way they see it. And I've got to respect my sister for that because uh, they're also doing some renovation work and there's no re any extra space. But there will be next year and we can do Zoom. So they can set up a laptop, put it at one of the spaces at the table, and then I can just talk shit to them while they eat their dinner. <laughs> Which I will do. And I'll probably date naked, because nobody can see anything, because I'm here alone, and then they'll feel real uncomfortable. So maybe I'll do that, just to, just to bam them up. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think I will, because I'll never live it down, and they'll probably end up cursing me for the rest of my life. So no, I'll not do that. But yeah, um, New Year will be coming, probably do something nice for that. But UK is kind of slowly clamping down. They're taking advantage of... Capitalism is still winning, as you know, guys, you know. They opened the shops and everything, letting people get their Christmas shopping in. Let them all go home with all the presents and toys and everything else and then say, guys, you cannot mingle with other households, so you're locked down, but thank you for spending all your money uh, before we locked you all in your house for another two months or so. That's how the system's working right now. That's how it seems to be. And then you've got Metaverse coming. This fucking The Matrix that Mark Zuckerberg's making. And I am very, very concerned about that for the mental health of people. I think that it's a very, very dangerous thing to be putting out, especially during a pandemic, with people being stuck at home and you're giving them this fake world that they can get stuck in. And when a pandemic's open, then they're too addicted and they'll just be trapped in that crap I think it's like Bruce Willis's movie Surrogates it's going to turn into that or it's going to be The Matrix or what was the other thing that I was thinking about Ready Player One so that's where we're headed guys we're heading in that direction if it was a free guy if it was a free city then I'd be in so I can chill with Ryan Reynolds uh, the blue guy blue shirt guy and we just start doing good times and be superheroes in Free City but no, I'm not happy with how things are turning out. I'm just looking forward to the borders opening so I can finally travel again. And obviously I need to fix my passport because it expires this year, so I can't do anything without fixing that first. Oh, you know, it's been a turbulent year. Very, very crazy year. Roller coaster, I would say. A lot of emotional mess. Um, losing my job. Hitting rock bottom again for the second time. And this will be the last time. Um, I was blessed, I mean, to get the jobs that I have now, to get the job at the Bahamas, and then also now being approached as to be a art director of the new job is, is a blessing. The universe has looked out for me. I know a lot of people don't understand why I say that often. I talk about the universe looking out for me. I'll go into that in a wee bit of detail, to be honest. I think it's only fair that I start talking about certain things, real things, about my way of thinking. Because a lot of people don't really understand me. <laughs> Sometimes I don't understand myself, but just bear with me with some of the things. So when I talk about the universe, um, I read a book 
a while back. Uh, I think it was like 10 years ago, maybe more. 2005, 16 years ago, I read this book. It's called The Celestine Prophecy by James Redfield. And it's just a Indiana Jones-esque kind of book where you're talking about manuscripts that were found in Peru about um, enlightenment. People will become more consciously aware of things that are going on around them. Uh, they'll be more open and susceptible to things that can't be explained. And I started watching it, I mean, reading this book, and it started off just like one of your old, your typical action books, you know, getting chased in a jungle, etc., etc., being hunted by a, a army of, like, I don't know, private armies or whatever else because they want to suppress these manuscripts. Because these manuscripts basically hold the key to enlightenment, you know, to people ascending and becoming enlightened beings, like carefree people, basically. So in the story, when you start reading it, you start to become attached to the character, but then you start questioning yourself and you start to like look at yourself as that character. It's as if they're talking to you, they're talking about you, because you start to relate to the people and you start to relate to the situations, the scenarios and everything else. And then the book starts talking about like the genetic make not genetic makeup, but the makeup of people's personalities. They say that there's four different personalities that every person has within them at one time. There is the interrogator, the aloof, which is the opposite side of each coin. Then there is the intimidator, no, the aggressor, and the victim, the poor me. And people generally use these um, these mechanisms in order to control other people. So everybody's made up of these four, but their parents most likely took on one of those traits, like completely took one of those traits. And when I mean one of those traits, I mean one of the like one of those coins because they take both sides. Because at any moment they can switch between the interrogator to the aloof themselves or they can turn from the aggressor to the poor me. So they use these to their own advantage whenever they feel they need to. And when I read, when I was reading this book and I read about that, then I started to think a lot about it, and it's true. I've started to pay attention to people's mannerisms, how they act and how they behave, and I try to kind of curb my own and try not to, when I seen that I was starting to act in that particular pattern, I tried to kind of stop myself midway through it, to stop, um, just, just didn't feel that I wanted to be like that, I wanted to be better than that, I didn't want that to kind of rule my life and rule my personality, so I started to kind of eliminate this from my personality. And as, as the story went on, they started talking about other things, about seeing about coincidences, that there is no such thing as coincidence. Everything is kind of pre... I would say preordained. It's a bit like Elliot and Mr. Robot. I don't know how many people have watched Mr. Robot. He basically says that control is an illusion, and I strongly agree with him. The only thing we can control is, like, me controlling this camera, controlling the lights, controlling my phone. I can control whatever I do. And I can control things that are... I'm not actually controlling, I'm manipulating this. So it's not a control thing. Um, but we have no control over anything. Everything, Everybody controls their own elements in their own ways. We cannot control people. We can try. But in another, and when we do that, it tends to end up badly for everybody because either they rise up or somebody recognises and challenges so we had no control. And that in the book he talks about that, that we everything's kind of preordained. And I, I was like, I don't want to think like that because we have a life in our life. But when I read more into it, it was more like we all have a, a path that we follow. So we do. There's life and there's death, but we do. What we do in between then is up to us, but we're always going to end up at the same destination. Yeah, we're all going to die, I know that, but that's not what the point is. The point is, and this is the part where it kind of gets a bit ooh, crazy and people start saying, oh, you're a freak, you're, you're this, you're that, and start talking shit and thinking I'm some kind of hippie or something like that. 
Um, before we before we're born, there's a, such a thing as birth visions, right? And this is what he talks about in the book. It's that it's research. It's what he thinks, and honestly, it makes more sense to me than any other explanation that I get from anywhere else in the world. So I'm gonna. T- I took it to myself, and I think that it's like that. And I'll give you a reason, another reason why I believe it's like that in a minute. And he basically says that before we're born, our soul chooses the life that we're going to live. So basically, they watch your entire life go like a movie. You just watch the entire life of you. And if it's a life that you believe that you want, you enter that life you become that that person so you have the birth vision you watch the whole life then you decide if that's the life that you wish to choose do you feel that you're strong enough and for example for people who have like broken homes and bad bad life or they have a, a cycle in the family that's been going on for generations some people there's always that one person who breaks the chain there's always that one person who can break that mold. And that's what that soul believed that it could do that. So it chose, yes, I will break this mold. I'm strong enough to break that mold. So they choose that life. And I believe it. And people think I'm crazy. And I talk about this sometimes. And people think, oh, you know, Jerome's a weirdo. But the reason why I believe it is how do you explain deja vu? How do you explain. Deja vu. How do you explain being somewhere before you've actually been somewhere? Or seeing something before you've actually been there? Because everybody has a moment when they go, oh my God, I just had deja vu there. Oh. And then they, they ask you, what did you see? And then you tell exactly what you saw. I believe that that's what that is. Small remnants of what you'd seen, that you've been erased, and then you get like a small impulsive like view of it in your life and then there you go that's your deja vus and the reason deja vu I think deja vu is important as well is when you have deja vu I believe that that means that you're on the right path it's in line with your life story it's in line with where your your direction you're supposed to be heading so anybody who doesn't have deja vu and I haven't had deja vu for a long time, then they're not on the right path. There's something missing and they need to figure out what it is that's missing or what path they have to take. And there's many reasons that you can be off track. It could be doing a job that you don't love. It could be being in a relationship with someone that you're no longer happy with, but you're just persevering because you don't want to be alone. It could be anything. It could be absolutely anything. You know, it could be in the wrong location. You could be living in the wrong town. It could be, that's what it could be. It could be anything at all. So it's not limited to one thing. It could be an event. It could be an accumulation of all. It could be all three of them. I mean, you could have married young, foolishly, and it wasn't meant to be. You just thought that this is not, you're not happy. You need out. You want to do something that makes you happy. So something that will come along that will break that mold or open the door or unlock something different, open new avenues for you. And then all of a sudden your life changes and things go in the right way. So that's just one element. The main, one of the other elements and it's really quite interesting is coincidence. There's no such thing as coincidence. It's kind of preordained. You know, I only started doing YouTube after I met YouTubers or started following channels. And then I thought, I want to do that. That'd be fun. You know, if they can do it, I can do it. That was the way I've seen it. And it's like, it's boring. I'm bored anyway, so I may as well fill some time. I've got cameras there. Let me go out and just use them. They're just sitting in a backpack. So what's the point of having cameras if I don't use them? So I just started going out and recording Largs and obviously Edinburgh and other places, the Falkirk and things like that. And... I enjoyed it and I thought this is fun you know and then it helped me with my editing skills which I learned from the job that I had when I was living in Spain so all these things that I had learned came from chapters in my life 
for example, it started in 2000 and 2001, 2001 it started. If I did not, if my friends didn't cancel on me when we were supposed to go to the pub and I didn't drink that one beer, I wouldn't have met that person that would have invited me to a party, which means I wouldn't have met a girl, which means I wouldn't have went to Norway, which means I wouldn't have met friends from Estonia, which means I wouldn't have went to Estonia. I wouldn't have decided I wanted to live in Estonia, which means I wouldn't have started my career in design. And because of those chain of events, everything stemmed from that. Everything. My whole life stemmed from those events. Cancellation, beer, party, meeting a girl, going to Norway, meeting friend, meeting people from Estonia, eventually coming back to Scotland, then going to Estonia, then living in Estonia, meeting more people, getting into the design aspect of my career, meeting more people, leaving there, going to Scotland, moving back to Scotland, then moving to Austria, living there, meeting people there, then moving back to Scotland, not getting any work, and, no, then moving to Malta, then living in Malta for a while, leaving Malta, going to Scotland, then moving to London, London again, moving again back to Scotland, not to the United States, back to Scotland, from Scotland to Spain, Spain and Gibraltar mixed, and then back to Scotland again. And then after that, I went to Norway, visit friends, stranded for a long time, but I enjoyed it. I got to meet more people again. Everything was a, for a reason. And it's all those chain of events that got me to where I am now. It's crazy. That's all I can say is absolutely crazy that that's how my life was and how it panned out. But it was that way. And when I say that, people will always kind of shake their head. But I'm going to ask you one question. Has there ever been a time where you walk down the street and you bump into somebody that you haven't seen in ages? And you go, oh, how are you doing? They say, oh, I'm good, thanks. And then you just continue on. You don't stop and chat. You just say hi, basically, a quick hi. And then you walk around a bit more and you bump each other again for the second time. And the only kind of response you give is some kind of joking response, are you following me? Or something silly like that. And then they kind of laugh and chuckle it off. But then you bump each other again for the third time. That's when you know that you have to stop and you just have to talk to each other. Why? Because the universe has put yourself in each other's path three times already. It's not coincidence. There's a reason for that. So take the time. You might find something out from them. They might find something out from you. Who knows? But at the end of the day, that's how it works. And you might get a bit of knowledge from them. They may have some useful information for you or something they have to pass on. And you may have something you may have to pass on to them. That's the magic of the universe. That's the way I see it. And just recently, it's been the same uh, with this whole, like the whole Japan thing. It started off, I mean, I had a lot of, but a lot of Asian ladies contacting me and like Instagram and obviously and like Facebook and there's all this dating stuff, you know, this spam and scammers. And I get really annoyed with them because they kind of come in quite a lot and it's really pissed me off. So I had to block a lot of people, block a lot of accounts. I don't even know how the hell they managed to fucking find. Just a bit like these crypto people now that kind of popping up everywhere on your Instagrams and stuff. It really annoys me as well. But one girl put a like on one of my pictures on Instagram and I thought, no, another one, you know. I rolled my eyes back the whole, the whole shebang. So I was like, okay, let me just check who this is. And I was like, oh. They have a YouTube channel. So I clicked on a YouTube channel. Then I started going through all the others. And so they all had channels because they said it on the video. So I started checking all the channels out. Started talking to them all. Uh, started to get into their kind of community. Started to learn more about Japan. Then I started looking at other people from Japan. But because of that one like on my picture, I met a good network of people in Japan. Good, Some good people there and uh, I'm starting to build a good uh, connection with a few of them and I'm quite happy with that but that all stemmed again from taking an action they, they didn't they weren't on my friends list uh, they weren't a follower uh, there was no tags on there that had anything that would link to, to, to Japan to anything and all of a sudden there they are on my 
on my Instagram account, putting likes on my pictures. So for me, uh, if that's not a sign from the universe, then I don't know what it is. And then I want to go to Japan, I want to visit. I was planning to visit at some point this year, actually, coming up. Um, but being remote in my job office, being based in the Bahamas, then I couldn't possibly do it the way I wanted to because I'd be 14 hours uh, ahead of Bahamas and means I wouldn't be able to do my work properly. But then, out of the blue, this India one comes up, which means I would be three hours be ahead if I was living in India and I think that that is another sign that that's my destination I've got to go to India obviously and see the place go to Nepal and see the temples in Kathmandu and um, take pictures make videos the Himalayas and they're there so I I just took a lot of beautiful photographs and visit Japan and see my friends there and obviously get the experience of being in Japan and Everything's kind of fallen into that place. And again, the universe. The universe provides people. It may sound stupid, but it does. And as long as you are open to it, then you're good. But if you just close your mind, then fine. It's you as one who's just walking around blind in the dark. I'm quite, my eyes are open. And I think things are going well, to be honest. I think um, the universe is looking out for me. And I'm thankful for that. Every day when I wake up, I always say thank you. But anyway, that was just me, little blog, talking about things that I think are interesting. They may not be interesting to you, you may switch it off, but who knows? It may kind of resonate with you, it may open your eyes. I'll put a link in the bio of the books that I'm reading in the book Celestine Prophecy and you can have a little look at yourself. And books that I would suggest that you should read is, like I said, Celestine Prophecy, We, um, A Brave New World, Fahrenheit, I think, I can't remember the name of it, 961, I think it is, the one about the books, that books were forbidden. Uh, um, also, 1984, you know, 1Q84, by Murakami um, Norwegian Wood um, Ka, is it Kafka by the Sea also Murakami books The Devil in Love by Kazote I mean there's many many books that you should read I mean I think reading is a good thing if you don't like reading get the audio books of them but they're beneficial and they're good books and they help Victor Frankl Victor Frankl's A Man's Search for Me is another one that's definitely something that I think everybody on earth should read. I think that it opens your eyes to many things. And I think if you're going through hardships and hard times, this book will change your life because you're... You, they say you shouldn't compare your life, but there's a, time in, there's a time in life where you ask yourself, am I really that hard done by? Am I really struggling that much? And then when you read A Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl, you will realise no. What you're going through is a speck compared to what that man actually did. And he doesn't write that book to compare. He writes that book to share his life experiences. And it's difficult when you read that book. Sometimes you have to put it down because it just, it's just heavy. But it's life-changing, life-altering and worth checking out. So anyway, guys, I'm going to end this ranting video right now. I uh, hope that there was some kind of knowledge in there or something interesting in there for you. If not, then I'm sorry for that. I'll try to do better. <laughs> no, I won't. I'll just continue being me. Um, but thank you again for your time and I will catch you on the next video. Jerome out.